Hey guys, welcome to another video for the Mi 11X, the Redmi K40 or the Poco F3. Three different names, one device and one amazing ROM that is Spark OS. Now I tried this, you know, I installed this on my phone yesterday night and since then I've been using it and of course as most of you know, the Mi 11X is my personal device these days. But before we get into the details of the first look, please subscribe and hit the notification bell icon so that you get notified every time I upload a video. In the description of each video, you will find the link to our Telegram community where you have more than a thousand like-minded people chatting with each other and talking about their devices. So join us there. Last but not the least, if you think the hard work is worth the effort, please click on the join button and support the channel. Now, without further ado, hello, awesome people. Welcome to Phone Ops. My name is Kalash. Let's get going. All right, so what do we have here? Mi 11X Spark OS 7.0 Mist official Android 11 updated on our Independence Day, 15th of August 2021. Now let's have a look at the changelog of the ROM. It is quite significant, but even if we have a look at the changelog of the device, as you can see over here, this is a lot of stuff. And if you want, you can maybe go to the uh, Mi 11X updates uh, telegram channel and check the change log yourself there i cannot read it out because then it'll be unnecessarily making the video long but it's it's a huge update that's what they have done because of the change log i can tell you and when you boot for the first time it does come with this very vibrant and beautiful looking wallpaper right a very very clean look with you know focus on simplicity to the left you have google discover which works like a charm now one thing that i noticed on this particular rom is that it comes with 120 hertz enabled by default now what i mean by that is always on 120 hertz which means in settings the minimum refresh rate is set to 120 and the maximum refresh rate is also set to 120. now moving on you do have your basic applications over here dialer phone maps chrome and you do get google camera go which is working absolutely fine so the camera duties are taken care of by Google Camera Go and I did notice that the moment I applied this yellow wallpaper the accent color changed to yellow so I don't know exactly if it is the way they are intending to do because that is something which you see in material U or monet UI wherein when you change the wallpaper the color of the accent changes as well so if you press and hold over here and you go to styles and wallpapers you do have all the amount of customization that you would expect from a custom ROM, from different clocks to the minute accent color, accent color, custom clock, R accent color, then you have the grid, then you have the style, you can create your own style over here, and you have the wallpapers as well. Now further, if you long press, you do have a ton of widgets over here in typical Android 11 fashion. And then if you go to settings, you do have this particular launcher. So in miscellaneous, you have double tap gesture, allow home screen rotations and developer options. Let's go there once again. Then you have your app drawer customization, very less. You do have support for hidden apps, so that's good. Suggestions is also there and you can customize the icons as well. Nothing pretty serious or nothing pretty, you know, which will tell you that the customization is over the top, but it is there. Now, you don't really get a lot of applications. All these applications that you see on the phone are the ones which I use because of course this device is my personal phone now moving on as i said this rom doesn't really boot with a lot of bloatware it just comes with very very basic applications so no bloatware worry over there and the customization menu or the settings menu whatever you look at when it comes to spark os it is placed very neatly these colorful icons they look different from the you know pure google theme that you have with android 11 roms so nothing nothing mono over here everything going on in typical fashion wherein colors are different and stuff like that but if you talk about network and internet connected devices apps and notifications battery you will see most of the things which are there in other custom roms as well for example in battery over here you do get thermal profiles Right. So I have enabled thermal profiles for a few few applications and you can see that the last full charge was 97 minutes ago. Well, that's not accurate because yeah, that's definitely not accurate. Anyways, that's that's a discussion for later. For now, we have something called as fireworks, a very, very well laid out customization menu. Now, in this, you have subsections like themes, quick settings, status bar, lock screen, power menu, gestures, notifications, navigation bar, buttons and miscellaneous. Let's have a look at themes. You have UI tweaker, icons, 
G Visual Mod, QS Themes, QS Media Player Settings, Volume Panel Style. So under UI Tweaker, you do have Monet Monobi. See, I told you, I didn't pay attention to that, but Monet Monobi is here. That means the color palette will keep changing. S Clocks Color. Wow. Okay, that's nice. Settings Collapsed Toolbar. So that's a lot of customization. You have Icon Customization. You have the G Visual Mod over here, something that I've not used and you have quick settle styles and themes and a lot of customization for that as well and you do have option for different types of volume panels so that is something really really neat and it also allows you to show app volume in the volume panel something like uh, the sound assistant in miui now you have the quick settings customization over here quick settings items again a lot of customization style animations and qs rows Moving on, you have status bar, you can enable the battery bar and traffic indicators. Well, let's show it to the status bar and show arrows. Let's see over here, we don't really have any activity. Display cutout, you can hide or enable that as well. Moving on, you have lock screen customization. And as you can see, there is a ton of lock screen customization. For example, if you go to lock screen charging, you can select the charging animation as well. Then you have setup weather options, lock screen extras. What do we have in extras? Fingerprint icon and lock screen. Oh, okay. Pocket detection and stuff like that. Lock screen music, lock screen shortcuts, always on display schedule. So schedule is disabled. Then you have the power menu. You have the AOSP settings and you have the power menu settings. Advanced reboot is on. Optional user interaction, save flashlight. You can go ahead and do that as well. So as you can see over here flashlight yeah so you know it's not only that it has a lot of customizations but it's working as well so asp gesture settings settings over here as you can see status bar lock screen brightness control swipe to screenshot is enabled there you go working like a charm so you know it, it feels good when you have a lot of options and most of them are working fine heads up notifications battery charging light edge lightning so you can go ahead and show always on show new notification only show light pulse show for all those events stuff like that a lot of customization available extra notification settings is also there now moving on, you do have your navigation bar customization, your notification customization is something we saw. And then you have buttons, volume rocker, wake, reorient and click partial screenshot. So that option is there as well. Now at the bottom, you have miscellaneous changes or miscellaneous features in which you have the gaming mode, sensor block per package, suspend actions, power saving, sleep mode, dose brightness, animations, extra tweaks, USB configuration and radio info. So that's everything about the customization options of Spark OS. But how is this ROM in general? If you go to display, as I said, it does come with 120 to 120. So 120 Hertz display is always enabled. And trust me, the moment I entered this ROM, I felt that this particular ROM is very, very smooth. I have tried using calling and it works just as expected. So if you go to network and internet and you go to mobile network, so as you can see, Wi-Fi calling is working as expected as well. I've not re really had any problems with, you know, the connectivity or any such features. So as far as using the ROM for a daily purpose or basic purpose is concerned, it is working absolutely fine. Let's see over here. Apart from this, you don't really have a lot of customization. That's everything that you will ever need to customize your device and it really will vary from person to person but as i said you know this rom is a new kid on the block it is working great for me i like the customization i like the look of it and uh, it is working as expected so you can definitely go ahead and give it a try now towards the end let's actually have a look at the important things that will matter to you in daily usage or day-to-day -day usage for example if we talk about drm info the Widevine L1 certification is there and it should work just fine. Apart from this, let's also go ahead and talk about safety net. Okay, now for some reason it says safety net failed. I don't have, 
I don't have Magic Skin installed, so maybe I'm I'll go ahead and check that because it did say that that safety net is passing. But I've not had any major issues with banking applications on this particular phone. Now let's have a look at the Antutu score, the Geekbench score, and the CPU throttle test over here. All right, now as you can have a look, this is the CPU throttle test. It says no CPU thermal throttling detected because we were using the benchmark thermal profile. Average performance is 248,000 GIPS. So that is something which is really, really neat as far as the performance is concerned. Now let's also go ahead and check Geekbench over here. So let's go to history. 940 single core, 2838 multi core. Not the highest score, but a pretty, pretty decent score. And let's also have a look at N22 benchmark, 679,026. So a pretty hefty score there in all the three benchmark numbers and the ROM is working smooth as well. It comes default with Google Camera Go and most of the things are working which should not, you know, give you any trouble when you're trying to use this as a daily driver. Spark OS to me looks like a very, very promising ROM. Let me know in the comment section what do you think about Spark OS. I might try it on the K20 Pro as well. Until the next one, this is Kalash signing off at PhoneOps. Keep smiling. Take care. Goodbye.